welcome to the Authentic Man podcast. I am your host, David Chambers. This is a podcast for men who want more and less from life. More deep connection, more emotional intelligence, more self-awareness and more great sex. And less. Less heartache, less conflict, less overthinking and less stress. Creating dating lives, sex lives and relationships that are incredible and authentic. My deepest goal is that you, the listener, can take away what you hear in this podcast and apply it to your life so that you can experience greater happiness, transformational growth, deeper relationships and profound sexual intimacy. I believe that as men, we are capable of so much more depth than we are shown or led to believe. So join me as we get deep into this. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very, very special episode, actually. This is episode 100 of the Authentic Man podcast. Um, I'm your host, David Chambers. Um, yeah, I'm going to remember this a slightly bit here. Um about this before we get to the topic of conscious relationships, you know, building, sustaining, expanding. Um, because, you know, 100 episodes, I remember, you know, the ep- the podcast really started out as an idea um, from AJ, really, you know, from my good friend AJ, who I started the podcast with. If you've listened to the earlier episodes, you would have, you would have heard him a lot because, you know, we did it together. Um, around just getting a message around dating for men into the world that was beyond the normal narrative of, you know, men being shit, men being stupid, men being emotionally distant. And we just wanted to aid men in their journey to being more emotionally connected, having better relationships, having better sex, having more connected sex. Because a lot of the dating advice that we saw was really all about doing. Do this, say this, do this, then say this and do this and you'll get where you want to. And our experience has shown us that that doesn't work. It doesn't work just to give someone loads of things to do and a, and a process to, to follow. What that creates is a very empty shell of a human being. They're disconnected from their own wants, needs, desires, and they're very disconnected from anyone else's. And if you end up in a relationship in that way, you end up in a very shallow relationship. So, you know, we embarked on creating episodes that were interesting to us and our and our listeners. Um, and, you know, sadly, yeah, say sadly, yeah. Um, you know, I stepped away from the podcast last year. So, you know, I changed the name. I did some revamping of colors and so forth and turned to the authentic man to to actually, with the aim of it being more encompassing than just dating, to help men in terms of relationships, um, sex, dating, manhood, masculinity, you know, all those things, because I see those as really, really important parts of our, our lives. And I've also seen through my coaching that, if a man doesn't feel powerful in his, his masculine energy and his masculine being, then he'll struggle to take action, struggle to have the sort of sex and lead his relationships and his life in the way that he wants to. So that's really, you know, what the podcast really is. You know, I'm sure you've, if you've listened along uh, to the recent episodes, go to some of the earlier ones because there's a lot of gold in those episodes, actually, with me and AJ talking. And they're actually probably a bit funnier as well because, you know, he's funny and we're funny together um but so yeah so yeah that's really the aim of this and to get to 100 episodes is quite a milestone because you know when I when we started off I think we recorded the first episode like September 2018 um and put the first episode live at like I think it was like December the 27th or something 2018 I don't think I would sit here and realize that we've had you know tens of thousands of downloads um you know, I've quit my job to, to do this full time as well as coach people and run events. Like there wasn't that that vision there to a certain degree. It was just a vision to create something and also some goals and so forth. So it's been quite a ride. And if anyone listening to this has a podcast, you also know that creating a podcast is a ride in its own because, you know, you're putting yourself out into the world to be judged and to be rejected and to be, you know, all those sorts of things. So if you're a 
regular listener, I want to say a big thank you to, to, to getting this far, you know, reg- listening to the episodes and sharing and telling other people because, you know, it's been really beautiful. Some of the people have come across and said, you know, their friend told me about the podcast and it's really helped them or some of the emails and messages I get sometimes from people saying, you know, it's really helped them in their relationships and build better relationship with their partners and have better dating lives, enjoy dating more and so forth. So it really warms my heart when I hear those. So, if, you know, if you're one of those listeners, please reach out. I'm always happy to talk, happy to exchange some emails and even answer some questions to help people even further. So enough of my appreciation. I guess this episode, let me tell you a bit about this episode. Um, I, you know, asked also to come on my partner who, if you go back to episode, I think it might be 29. She features in that episode as well as I think 39 as well or 37, one of the two. She's in two episodes, but how we actually met was through the podcast. You know, she asked to come on the podcast, we met. And then after that, you know, we got on pretty well and we just kind of kept talking, you know. We just kind of got talking. It wasn't really, and things unfolded, which you're going to hear about in the episode. And we just talk about how this idea of conscious relationships has kind of sprung up, I think, in the last few years. And we talk about our experience of relating to each other from a place of, openness to who each other are but also from a place of like being present and in the moment and how that's really like created a very you know good foundation for us very solid really beautiful loving foundation for us and how you know we have kind of baked in things like sexual explorations i know for a lot of men if you're a man listen to this i know sexual exploration is one of the things that's very high on men's list when it comes to being in a relationship and I know for women, for instance, safety and trust is a very high thing. And those two things are deeply entwined. If you're a man listening to this, if you can create safety and trust in your relationship, sexual exploration, and you're, and, and you're willing to lead sexual exploration, you will have a lot of sexual exploration in your relationship. And, and if you're a woman and you want to experience more trust and safety, allow yourself to explore of your man and these things are very cyclical things so there's some some advice there um but yeah we also talk about our our fears that were stopping us from getting into relationship before and like you know what's getting in the way and how we how i really move past my fear of commitment that's an important part of the episode there and kind of how people can you know celebrate each other and be more deeply accepted in relationship how what support looks like what real support in a relationship looks like even when it's uncomfortable you know, we really talk about, you know, what it takes to build a, a conscious relationship, even though it wasn't our intention to build a conscious relationship. We just wanted a relationship that we could both be ourselves in. We could both um, speak our truths and be open and honest about who we were and what we wanted. And also to discuss our dysfunctions, our trauma, our triggers. And I think that that's really the space that we live in and, and we operate from. And added to that, being deeply committed to growth. You know, that's another thing as well that comes in the in the in the podcast, but also um comes up in just our, our, our relationship in general. And also to kind of commemorate this episode, because as we started to record this episode, we started to realise that a lot of the things we'd learned they'd be really useful to couples to learn, couples and single people to learn, right? So that if you're a single person and you want to be in more of a conscious relationship. You know, how do you do that? Where do you start shifting your mindset, what to look for, how you can cultivate that in yourself? And if you're in a couple, how can you start to expand and create more trust and love and connection in your relationship? So because of that, we thought we'd be able to just put in a workshop. So, you know, if you're listening to this at the beginning and you've, you know our work, then this is a workshop for you. Um, it's going to be on the 12th of December in the kind of early afternoon, sorry, late afternoon And we're going to be talking about conscious relating and how to build conscious relationship, how to maintain and how to expand. And we're going to, you know, talk about various topics, you know, sex, emotions, connection and so forth. And you can find the link to that in the show notes. That's going to be down in the show notes. Um, There you can click through and get yourself a little early bird ticket and so forth to come along if you're listening to this early after the, the release. But if you've got this far, eight minutes into me talking, big thank you. You know, like I said, um, this is going to be a really beautiful episode. It was amazing to record because um, we actually recorded this sitting opposite each other naked. We decided we warmed up the flat. And we just sat, you know, complete opposite. So it felt very open hearted to just have this conversation. So it's a very loving conversation. Um, 
I even had new realizations about our relationship as we were talking because we'd never spoken about various aspects of our relation to a third party, meaning you, the listener. Um, so we had to explain things a bit more. So, you know, I got more perspective on things that also was feeling and she got more perspective on things that I was feeling. So, yeah, you're going to get a lot from this. You know, it's a really beautiful conversation, as I said. But without further ado, I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say share this with a, a person that may need this, who may help them in their pursuit of a relationship. Um, and then I'll let you jump into the episode. Hello, people. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm back with a, a special episode, this being the 100th one. But, you know, you probably heard that in the intro. But I'm here with my wonderful woman who... As you may or may not know, that we met through uh, this very podcast. She came and featured in the podcast. I think it's like episode twenty-seven or something like that. Is it twenty-seven? I can't remember. Okay. Um, also, I don't really need to. I guess if you've never, you know, you know who I am. But if you, you know, you've never come across her, then it'd be right that she would intro herself. Yeah. I feel so excited and a little bit nervous about this um, recording today, um, but mostly excited. Um, So my name is Orsa, I'm David's partner. Um, I am also a matchmaker. Um, I'm the founder of Taylor Matched, which is a offline matchmaking agency where we match our members on sexual compatibility and romantic compatibility. I'm also a female coach and together we also coach couples Um, and we also initiate people into Tantra solo Mm. and coupled, which is very beautiful and yeah, I'm very glad to be here. Mm. Thank you. And as a side note, we sit here, we decided that we would record this episode in the most vulnerable way we could and the most honest and way we could is to sit here naked as we record this episode just felt you know it was warm in the flat so we decided to go that way um and we're going to talk about conscious relationships um our own journey with conscious relating slash relationships in the last kind of two years um what a conscious relationship is and you know that's as much as we know to be honest at this point um and uh yeah we're just kind of gonna talk about talk about that um yeah and I think I was saying that maybe the best place to start is kind of before we met, what was stopping us from getting into a healthy or conscious or aware relationship um, or relationship in general, you know, before we met? Like, I guess the question would be is what was there for you? What was kind of your blocks and fears in terms of getting into a, a relationship? Oh, there were. <laughs> How long have we got? Uh, no jokes aside, for for me, my my own journey um, started when I started to tell myself that I could knew I was going to be successful in in whatever business um, and professional career that I put my mind to. Um, but a belief that started to form from that was that I could either have a successful career or have a healthy, loving relationship. Uh, Another belief that started to form for me in another pattern was that I could either have a loving relationship or an exciting sex life. I didn't think I could be or have both. Mm. So for me, what became very clear, not until I started to do some digging into my own patterns and how come I always ended up in the same end result in my love life that I did not want. From there, I understood that it was a lot of either or mindsets um working in the corporate arena meant that I thought I had to become as much of a man as I possibly could in mannerisms, in my expression, how I was being. And because I was working so much and really dedicated towards my career, I completely lost touch and connection with my femininity. Um, my feminine side wasn't celebrated in my childhood either really was more the masculine, the achieving and doing and football and cars and and watches and, you know, doing good and doing big all the time. So it was a lot of different strands. Um, Outward, though, was that I met men that was more friends with benefits, 
you know, some call them fuck buddies. And outwardly, I was like, yeah, this suits me perfectly because I'm a very busy career woman, which I was and I am. But to the outer world, I was very like, yeah, this is totally cool with me. This is ex- exactly what I want. Internally, I was very unfulfilled and felt very lonely and I didn't felt met at all. And I also then, when I was in therapy, I understood that I didn't think I was worthy of love and commitment and it was even on a more granular level where it then made sense that dates that I would have gone on or maybe you know swiping and matching with somebody I remember clearly that I never asked if they were free on the weekends because I was like Mm. that time is too valuable so it was a lot a lot of things to to unpack for me but in short (laughs) this is 32 years of journey Mm. and I would say that it came down to that Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that. And obviously, it's not the first time I've heard that. Um, <laughs> and I think it's interesting that it's, um, you said binary, you know, yes and no. And I, and I kind of, it's something we were talking about earlier today, which we'll talk about when we get into the episode around consciousness and unconsciousness. And I see this as a very immature masculine way to look at the world, like binary. So binary is a very interesting, isn't it? Like, we're like on, off, left, right. I guess it's the dual, the dual duality. But in this case of like, you can have one or the other. Yeah. And it's this kind of, you know, what I think, you know, and I know of is this like you grew up with this immature masculine energy. You yeah. Know, what we often will call like patriarchal energy in your life, where it's like you can have one or the other. You can't have both. Um, and that, you know, things are binary. Life is binary. It's yes or no, good or bad. You know, and it's actually quite a kind of toxic way to look at life. And it had that effect on from you, from what you're saying. Yeah, and you know, what I didn't understand at the time, but I cal- like I worked out very, very quickly as a young girl, was that, mm. oh, I get money every time I score a goal in football. And because I'm very competitive, pretty much what I set my mind to tends to happen. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to score goals. I'm going to work out everything about football. So I then made that mean. My story then became that I had to be exceptionally good in terms of performance whatever that looked like in order to receive love this Mm. was nothing that was consciously said by my parents and this was a story that that I made something mean um, which I didn't question Um, and another um, thing that I have spoken more about in events recently was that because my mom and dad decided to one day just say that if you were a boy this would be your name And as a little girl, what I took from that conversation, this was not explicitly communicated at all, never have been, and I don't think it's the case at all, that I was like, oh, they're choosing to share who I would be if I was a boy. That must mean they wanted a boy. Mm. Oh, no, they never wanted a girl. How do I become more of a boy? I.e. not play with Barbies, I should wear a cap, whatever a little girl assumes a boy should be and, and play. So looking back and even saying it now, I can see it's so much more clearly how many times I've made an assumption that I would be have been better off being a man. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I guess inside of that, you know, for some of the listeners you might be listening to this and being like, oh, you know, you know, feeling of self worth and so forth, like, you know, these things preclude us from having a relationship and having a good relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean I As I said, it's it's a lot of things that I made, and now I speak in these terms because I'm a coach, you know, maybe, you know, if I didn't work with this, I wouldn't say this is a story that I have attached and this is a belief system, you know, but it was certain things, what I made certain things mean. And therefore I completely rejected myself from even having the opportunity of having love or even in relationships that I had to really be seen as, as all of who I was because I was Mm -hmm. like if I show who I am they are gonna leave me I'm Mm -hmm. gonna be too much or I just need to be on my best behavior second guess everyone's behaviors all the time so I can also accustom to them Mm -hmm. you know which is an exhausting way of being so a lot of self-rejection um I think is a word that that comes up and without giving myself you know if it was in business I often you know jokingly say like ask me to set up a company it's like yeah no worries like 
moving country and learning a second language yeah i'm down for that um would you want to lead with vulnerability and open up your heart hell no mm. <laughs> until one day i was like i'm deeply unfulfilled in my life mm. something needs to change um, and that was the that was the cue for me and i started to take radical responsibility for creating change in my in my life and in my love life which started about seven years ago but started to really accumulate probably five years ago got it got it um that was a question i was gonna ask but it slipped my mind um around did you find yourself like in these relationships you know you said there's a very masculine part of how you were you were being so did you find that in relationship you were um you know, if you talk about polarity, were you in living in that pole of being the masculine partner? Oh, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. It was all my life until I was thirty was all about my career yeah. and how I could progress. Um, ty- getting bigger titles mm-hmm. um, and a bigger pay package. And if I'm really honest with myself, even though I at the time said other things um, mattered to me, they didn't ask much. Um, mm. And I can see it was um, a couple of occasions, for example, where where my ex partner would say, "You know, I really miss you being here." And I then lashed out at him, going, "What are you talking about? I'm commuting every day to to be out here. You wanted to live out in the countryside. I'm here all the time." If I was really honest with myself, and I remember some of these examples, you know, very very clearly, I was literally on the phone with some work email at the time of him trying to open up well I guess opening up and I just shut it down Mm. straight away because I was like I don't have time tomorrow is another busy (laughs) business day and all I knew was how to be productive and how to be good at it Um, I was never in a relaxed and calm state either I was you know it's taking me 32 years maybe up until I kind of like cracked the code earlier this year about how to slow down and how to be in my body and how to be in flow Mm. I didn't know what it meant to be in flow I thought you had to work to be in flow which is the counter (laughs) um counter thing to do isn't it so in short I was very much in in my masculine and didn't embrace or know how to dial up my femininity my feminine being Mm. and I guess for me to speak into my question answer my own question um where I was coming from was come to relationship was very much like um for many years relationships were like prison they Mm. you know I couldn't do I wanted I wanted to be free I wanted to you know still sleep around I wanted to um go and do what I want when I wanted to do it I think that's probably the best but it's like if I wanted to go to a party one night I'd wanted to go to a party if I wanted to you know go meet some friends and have some friends I wanted to go be able to do that and I felt that inside of a relation that wasn't possible and then I was in a relation for probably seven years and you know inside that relation there was a lot of freedom in terms of living how I wanted to which I guess that relationship really shifted my idea before that relationship I was like it's relationships are just prison they're full of stress and conflict and all those kind of things And then I guess being in that relationship for seven years, it wasn't without its, you know, stress and conflicts and feeling of not having freedom. But I started to develop the, um, what's it called? I started to develop the ability to, you know, enjoy the relationship to a certain degree. Mm. And then that kind of came to an end over kind of my inability to communicate. That was a big thing for me, like saying what I want, what I was feeling. And then I guess after that, I started to... Um, it was looking at this fear of commitment that sat with me a lot. Which was like, you know, is it a fear of commitment? Is it because commitment, what did I make commitment mean? Like I had a big mm. story from my childhood, like, you know, none of the adults around me had, from what I can really remember around me, close to me had functional relationships. Where either they were not, they were single and they were, you know, single parents of some type. Or they were in a relationship and it didn't look good. It didn't look functional. It didn't look healthy. You know, man disappearing for days on end or not really being around that much. Woman being upset with man. Like that was a lot of the what I saw. Even though I had uncles and aunts who were in functional relationships, I didn't see them very often. I might see them twice a year. So I never really saw them. So my um, 
whole idea around relationships is like they don't work. There's you know people are not happy. How do you even have a relationship, mm. right? So after my relationship, I remember coming back to London after my travels and you know doing like Wasco in Peru and that kind of kind of thing. I was like, okay, I kind of would mind something in a certain way. I wanted a relationship. I started to think, okay, I want something. Um, but there was still this idea around commitment and getting hurt. There was, you know, a big part of, especially, you know, the guys I've worked with is around a fear of commitment is actually a fear of getting hurt. Mm. So you have a fear of getting hurt or getting bored that seemed to come up a lot. And I think, you know, there was definitely that for me, actually, when I look at it now, like a, f- a fear of becoming bored and, you know, um, getting hurt was definitely there. And I guess for me, there was a journey of like getting really hurt by someone, you know, being in... I think I would probably call it a relationship. I don't know if she probably would call it a relationship, if I'm honest. Um, and getting really hurt and actually experiencing that hurt and being like, oh, wait a minute, I can survive this. Mm. I think it was a big thing. It was like, oh, this is hard, but actually it's not as bad as I think it's going to be. Like, I think a lot of the time we think getting hurt is going to fucking absolutely kill us and, and drown what we want. But um, kind of getting through that and having an idea of what I want is the relationship to look like I think that was a key thing it's like okay I want to be free in terms of being able to do what I want but actually I want to be able to communicate that and be like oh you know next week I'm going to do this thing mm. but also have consideration from someone else and stuff like that so I think that was a a long journey for me because it was still you know still sitting in there it's like an inability to really communicate how I'm feeling you know because of I don't want to upset. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to ruin the relationship. I think that's what comes up a lot. It's like, oh, mm. I can say something that completely ru- could ruin this relationship. Mm. That was definitely something that when I kind of feel into that, it was there. It's like, oh, if I could open my mouth now and say something that can completely ruin the relationship and never come back from. Mm. And like being really scared of doing that. And I guess that still kind of shows up because I'm very, when I get into emotional states, though it doesn't look like I'm feeling emotional, I'm very careful with my words, mm. you know? Because I guess I've been in relationship with women who have been very like say things, throw things, and then it's just like I'm not forgiving you after you've just said that. Like that's a step too far, and I'm never having that again. So I'm always really mindful of that, and I think that still is still there. But you know, there's always a light and dark side of that because it means that I don't just blurt things out that are super harsh, really. Yeah, and I think you know a key like takeaway Mm. and what I'm hearing from what you're saying as well. And I guess, you know, what we do as, as coaches and we've, because we've done it for ourselves is the ability to create your own uh, reality and your own relationship that works for you. Mm. I often hear people go, Oh, I wouldn't want my parents relationship. And it's like, you don't, it's not automatically going to be, you know, you are Mm. in power to create um, what it is that is important to you, first of all, of course, you know, tuning in. But I think that's a lot of the work, actually, to be very clear about what it is that you want and being able to communicate it. And, you know, of course, there's a lot of things, you know, in between and before and after as well, but that's like two key things. And mm. that is, I find it liberating because I've done the journey. When I started, I was petrified but I was also deeply hurting that I was like this is not how I go about my life I create things you know how come I don't do it for this element and I guess it's it's that thing that I always want people to know that you have the power to create what you want your life to look like and what you want your relationship to look like um you know which is a tremendous freedom in that as well yeah yeah and I guess for me it was like I didn't see that that was a possibility Mm. like I can get to because you're just left with this and I'm sure you know you the listener I know this is like we're we're given this kind of cookie cutter like this is how relationships be and to a certain degree we take our parents relationship as the gold standard even if you consciously or unconsciously are doing this right you take your parents relationship as a gold standard I had a friend of mine I saw the other day and he was saying how when he had his first child with his wife, they argued a lot in the first six months. Mm. And what he didn't realise is was that he was expecting his wife to be like his mother and she mm. wasn't. But he didn't even consciously realise that's what he was expecting. Yeah. And it took a while for, for that. And I think we do that in relationships. We expect our partners, we expect to 
consciously or unconsciously, whether we accept or reject this, our parents' relationship. And I guess for me, because my parents didn't have a relationship I ever saw, mm. so there was no, I have my relationship to a certain degree, you know, maybe is that is that my dad's aloof and when he would talk to my mum, there would always be this like, she's questioning him and asking what he's doing and he's being defensive and like mm. maybe, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Passive aggressive, mm. you know? So I think I see that, you know, even inside of how I was <clears throat> with women a lot as I was growing up, that would be dating is that's how I would be. I'd be like, you're asking me right. questions. You're trying to, you know, I need to defend my position. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, losing out here. Yeah, I'm losing out in some way. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, and what's, um, what's interesting with, with my parents is that something that my mum, I think, said quite early so my mum and both grandparents, and as long as I know, doubt, know in the family tree, uh, are all still together. Mm. You know, some of them have sadly passed away, but before passing, they were still married. Yeah. I hope happily married. So I come from a background and my family where I know that I, I could see that mum and dad work really, really well as a partnership. Mm. They were, they were kind of, you know, um, enhancing each other really, really well. Mm. Um and so I have the and had the idea and I could see for myself that this creates a strong foundation of life and of support and they are there for one another. What I then later understood was that, OK, I could see that they were supporting each other in like activities and tasks that needed doing. Mm. I didn't see the emotional side. Yeah. And I think this is why I made it mean that it's like, OK, I, I'm good at creating and delivering tasks and um, when it came to my emotional side I has this got a place you know probably not I'm just gonna scale that back of course with all the other experiences that I had in my in my own life on top of that but it was definitely this foundation of knowing that mom and dad are like you work you know really well together yeah however what was not there what I could see anyway was the emotional element and therefore I thought that in order to have an emotional intimacy or in order to have intimacy, which I confused with sex, mm. I need this outside the relationship and therefore I need to meet men that I can have sex with. Otherwise I don't have the emotional or any form of intimacy there. Yeah. You know, I just okay. didn't think it was that from, from the relationship. So it was just like two strands. Mm. And this was the turning point for me when I remember I, well, one of the many turning points and I was sitting with my um, therapist and the second time I came to see her, the second round of times, and she was like, oh, how are you doing? You know, um, she was a bit surprised I was there because we've done such progress the first time we worked together. I said, I'm really here because why is it that I either meet men that I'm compatible with romantically or they're compatible sexually, but never the same? Mm. And I was like, I'm just coming from it from a very curious place. And that became kind of the foundation. And then, of course, it was a lot of understanding and, and knowledge and insights um, from that place. Well, I think that um, for me it was like I was I did this a lot in my 20s is like just in short relationships and you know mm. sex would be really good and it'd be fun but I would refuse to have any source of commitment mm. like, I didn't want to be committed I wanted to be able to leave when I wanted to leave um, and I didn't have to want to have to like talk to you and I didn't want to talk to you and things like that you know I didn't want any obligation I yeah. wanted and I wouldn't say I wanted all the good things without any of the bad things. I don't think it was that simple because I was doing the things I was willing to give up, like, you know, holidaying and stuff like that. Yeah. But everything was very much on my terms and how I wanted it to be. Um, which, you know, it served the purpose of, like, you know, it served its purpose. You know, I learned a lot of things. I met some really great people. We had a lot of good times. And I think sometimes, um, you know, we look back on maybe those times and go, oh, it was all terrible. But actually, it never, you know, we had good times a lot in, in those times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I guess that's understanding where we came from, you know, you know, our fears, our concerns and our worries. And I guess it's like, how do you, how do we form more conscious relationships? You know, because ultimately, you know, you're listening to this because you're interested in conscious relationships and, you know, we formed a relationship which we didn't consciously going into our relationship going, we want a conscious relationship. I think that's an interesting thing. We kind of mm. went into our relationship being like, mm, I want to be able to s 
speak freely, speak openly about what I need and I want or what I'm feeling. Um, but even that, I don't really remember there being a deliberate conscious conversation about that at the beginning. We kind of just initially started talking. We were very open sexually about what we were interested in. But I yeah. guess, you know, to give some pretext on that, we um, the episode we recorded was about sex, you know, removing shame from sex. Yeah. And, you know, I it was me, AJ and yourself sitting in this very room we sit in now. And really the configuration isn't much different either. Um, but, um, so I... Th- you know, we start our relationship by talking very openly about sex, which is one of the things that people are most to do taboo about, right? Yeah. So in a way, we started off talking about sex very consciously and openly. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember uh, one of the talking points was around sex parties and whether we had experienced it and uh, would we want to, to do it in, you know, in the future. Mm. Uh, we didn't speak about us together like are we doing it you know it was just a explorative conversation about hi this is you know this is my experience about sex club i've really enjoyed it this have been my learnings and i feel more you know liberated and then you kind of spoke into that about your experience and going with your ex-partner i believe Um, and i was like okay cool so you've gone with with a partner that's a dynamic i haven't explored and i feel that when we met and when we started to have conversation it was so many conversation that was in flow it was like oh it wasn't about you and me and whether this was going to be a relationship or or how that relation was going to be it was Mm. just like hi this is me and this is everything that I'm excited about this is what I'm doing and uh, you said oh you should totally go to this workshop with like sex club you need to go and meet a girl called Chloe and I was like please send me all these links after Mm. taking me on further exploration so you know, what I took from that was that I felt, because one of the most important things for me when I, so after my previous relationship, I did a lot of inner work. I took a lot of time out for the first time in my whole life. You know, I've been on a mission since I literally came out of my mother's womb (laughs) Um, to, to take some time out. And then I took a hiatus from men because I thought, I don't know actually who I'm, who I, who am I without men? Mm. You know, I I just don't know whether I do these things because I want them or is it because I get attention from men or is it because it's, you know, is it about them? So after having a hate uh, from men (laughs) and just being having the driest summer ever, uh, we we went to a um, family friend on Friday and she was joking that that summer I used to even find like lots of animals in the garden having sex. It was like ladybirds and all sorts. (laughs) I was like, why is everyone? (laughs) It was just, you know, like such a pinpoint. And when I then also had some time to connect to what was important to me my non-negotiable really was that I wanted to be heard Mm. I wanted to be I don't I think actually how I phrased it was I wanted to be listened to Mm. I wanted to be able to say a whole sentence and not be interrupted I wanted to be accepted for for who I am and and the fact that you know I'm a successful businesswoman and I also love sex Mm. You know, if you love it, cool. And if you hate it, I'm not for you. Mm. You know, I've came to a point where it's like, this is really important to me. So then to be able to share it with you and you were like, okay, cool. Yeah. How was it for you? I was like, oh my God, I I found it so exciting to be able to have those conversations. And even as I'm saying, and now I'm smiling a lot Mm. because I'm kind of like, well, we still have those conversations. And when it was in the beginning, it was such a new experience for me to just be accepted and in fact being encouraged um, to do it mm. and we didn't well I didn't feel I went into like oh David has done this um, sex workshop is he gonna go there and meet other it was just not about you it wasn't about us it was about two individuals who came together and had a lot of things in common because we both chose to talk about a lot of things yeah yeah I think that's that's a really good point is that um you know the first time we met was uh you know AJ had organized it and I wasn't even really meant to be there and I fell asleep on the train and I got there and um I was you know talking to you and I was just talking to you from the point of view I was like oh this you know this girl's interested in these things and I think these would be useful so I was like you know you should go to this workshop and you should go to the, speak to this person and these things and blah 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 um and you know fast forward we met the the day with the podcast and you know maybe some of you might find this, some people might actually think this is um, 
disagreeable and unprofessional actually because you know we sat on the sofa we talked we recorded the podcast and then we just kind of kept messaging afterwards yeah you know I think I don't know what it was but there you know there was a maybe you know to a certain degree I felt that there was something there when we were recording you know and mm. then I was just continuing this conversation and I wouldn't say necessarily when I started the conversation I was like oh we're gonna hang out because I don't think we talked about that really no we well. didn't and it was only after we were like exchanging messages and we and I think also put it really well is that we just spoke about what we were doing or what we were interested in not from a point of view of like I need to say these things because you know I want this relationship to go a certain way mm. I was just showing you know what I'm about what I'm up to yeah with, with, with you and it included you know talking about sex uh it talked to, involved talking about maybe even workshops I was going to that were non-sexual workshops and you know that I can't remember exactly all the things we talked about because yeah. it was you know there were long long messages i think for anyone as well we would only message like once a day tops yeah yeah and it would be and i remember often coming home and like sitting on my laptop would i type them i think I, maybe whatsapp on the phone on the laptop wasn't there then and i would um write them out so i'd be like okay read her message and then type it back and then we didn't do less messages at all mm. if that was even a thing then um but it was like they were engaging messages and we would, it wouldn't just be answer, question, answer. It'd be like, oh, I've talked about this. Uh, I think once you sent me, Lola had a link, had a, a questionnaire thing. You sent it to me once. And you were like, and I remember it was like, you sent it to me and then I maybe didn't do anything with it. And I think you almost asked me like, are you going to fill that in and send it back to me? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah. You know, one of the things for me was really important to me was a relationship where it was sexually open. That's, yeah. And there's always been something, you know, as you said, I've been to uh, sex parties with past partners and mm. I was like interested in something sexually open. And, you know, I think that was obviously something that you wanted as well. Yeah. Um, and I think to a certain degree, things around like communication and stuff weren't, I guess what I wanted, I started to figure out now it's important to speak about how I was feeling. Mm. And I also thought it was important to, um, what's the, um, yeah, I guess it was important to be able to be like, I want to do what I want to do. Mm. Like I need to live my life with certain, certain freedom. And I wanted something that was independent. I think that's a really important thing to me, an independent woman. And actually I would say there was a couple other things that were important to me, which we you know talked about. Like I really wanted someone who, I'd like traveled extensively, for instance, mm. right? And I wanted someone who was, um, you know, I think I'd probably, you know, that was a big one for me, actually, the, the travel extensively, right? But equally, I didn't hold on to that too tightly. It wasn't like, oh my God, it must be this thing, because I started to look at that it wasn't necessary that um, you traveled extensively. I was like, but it was just open to that sort of thing. I'm not afraid. And I started to see for myself what it was like, is this person brave? You know, is it is, is stuff like that that started to become important to a certain degree? Um, so I guess what I'm saying there is like, as we formed our relationship, it wasn't like testing each other out. Like, I, I think there was little things that come up, you know, like we hung up a few times and we like, had fun. And I think there was a, I think there was a time where we were sitting in the park and we, yeah. I started, and this is an interesting one, I started to speak very freely about the type of family and life that I wanted in the future. And I think I spoke about me. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't really afraid. And I think this is a quite, quite a turning point because in years gone by, I'd have been afraid to say what I, what I want going forward because I would be worried that a woman would just pro like project herself into that. Mm. Um, and then that would cause, put me in a situation where, Oh my God, I, I didn't really promise you. Oh, you think I promised you? I didn't, you know, Whereas I think at that point in my life, you know, then I was very free in just saying, you know, this is what I want my life to be. And it was like, you know, family, I wanted life to be a bit more maybe being in different places and have children and stuff like that. Mm. And I think a lot of men are really scared to talk about that stuff because they think it makes them sound needy. Um, but actually, when you're just talking from like, this is what I would like, it's, it's like a place of like, I'm sure what I want for my future. Yeah, and I really resonate with what you said to share it without, or I guess with less fear. Mm. And I found myself in a 
in so many situations with you where, you know, talking about the texting first and foremost, or just remembering that, you know, my non-negotiable was to be heard and to be listened to. And if you fast fast forward backwards, <laughs> if you go back in time, um, I couldn't ask a man to meet me on a Saturday on a Sunday because I thought that time was too precious over mine or I downplayed my own worth. To then when I met you was to really insert myself in like this is who I am and this is my experiences and this is why I choose to share with you for no purpose and to just share. And the messages were so long. I didn't know. I think maybe it's I don't think I knew that you could actually write so much that it re- uh, read you back a little message going, click here, read more. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and I was like, and I remember I read, you know, I wrote it, you know, 100%. I reread it a couple of times yeah. um, and then press send uh, probably through the phone and towards the other end of the sofa going like, oh my God, I can't believe I said all those things. Yeah. And then I read back and I was like, bloody hell, why does it say read more? I was like, oh no, this message is so long. <laughs> it's actually divided into different fractions or whatever and then when you you know replied I was like oh he not only replied but I really heard that you had really read aka heard what I said Mm -hmm. because it was very it was questions back and it was reflective and it was like you know how did it make you feel or I hear from what you're sharing that you know and I think at one point uh, or along lots and lots of messages was like you said that oh I really understand that it's important for you to be heard and even though I didn't explicitly say it it came across as strongly that you could pick it up because this was a value of mine and I also made it clearly not to be like this is all the things you need to do for me but I guess in my language I bake that in you know and you're like okay I hear you and I was like okay cool oh, yeah. you know amongst um I didn't do it consciously but when you were when you replied with that I was like oh yes and I kind of like look back at the messages um yeah so to then be able to communicate um with long messages and really you know explicitly share was something that that was so so beautiful um and for the first time I too think that I shared it with that because I really let myself talk to you and like really share and I remember that not because I was like look how good I am or look at this or look at the other um it was just for the sh- for the purpose of like I feel very excited about everything we're talking about and on I don't know when we would count as the that's the first date I think even the first time we went on a date we didn't really know whether it was a date or whether it was just like cooking food or or whatever yeah I was very unsure I was very unsure <laughs> I was like oh, are we is this a date um are we do we want to are we gonna have sex maybe we're gonna have sex I don't know and it was a real point I've told this on podcasts and I've told you this before where we I stood also by um mm. my I've got a collage of banknotes from around the world and we stood there and I kind of leaned very gently against her. And this was my way of checking if, if she moves away, then she doesn't want any physical contact at this moment. <laughs> yeah. um, and you didn't, you just stayed there. Yeah. And this is a, you know, for those men out there, women out there that want a little um, technique, I guess this is what you said, check. You just like, okay, does she want to be here? Yeah, she does. Okay, cool. Um, she wants to be here. So, um, you know, we had a really beautiful evening um, together, but we weren't sure. And from from that point as well, you know, in case I'm fast forwarding, is like we didn't go into our relationship thinking, oh, we want this to be a relationship necessarily. I don't know how it was for you. I was just like, mm. okay, we're talking. This is really cool. You know, we were both very sexually open. I think, you know, there was a thing talking about being in an open relationship as well. Something yeah. we both talked about. And I was like, okay, cool. And we were both up for communicating very honestly. Yeah. And very truthfully about those things. And we had similar ideas of where we wanted to be in the future when we kind of talked. Um, I'll never forget Orsa's eyes when I talked about having kids and stuff like that. You kind mm. of, you, you know, I always refer back to that moment. I was like, there was a moment when you looked at me differently for a few moments. Um <laughs> But kind of after that, it was like, okay, cool. This is, I just remember being like, okay, I really enjoy hanging out with her. Oh, I'm going to hang out with her again. I really, I'm really enjoying this. And I think this is like a lesson to anyone. It's like, when you can go into things to just enjoy the thing, yeah. instead of being so focused on where you want it to go to, as long as you're open 
you know, and you're open to the person. I think that's also a key thing. I didn't have any story about who you were and who you weren't. Mm. I was just like, okay, there's this woman, I've met her through the podcast and she, you know, she does some amazing things. And, you know, I was quite, you know, I thought it was quite awesome how you were moving through the world. And it just developed from that. There wasn't this like, oh my God, this is the person for me. Like this has to be it kind of thing. That wasn't, you know, obviously your experience might be different. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, it might have been helpful that I just, you know, come off like a 10 day meditation retreat, maybe a month or two before we met. I was just super calm, mm. but able to be really present to enjoying the the things I was in and sort of putting any story into how things had to be. Yeah. And I think something that to just slightly go back to what you said earlier of it felt like we were both very clear on that in previous relationships, we were not celebrated for who we were. Yes, that's a big thing. That was That's yeah, a big thing. We I think shamed. We, like, yeah. For instance, for me, I'd always feel a bit, especially, sorry to jump in, especially around like, like sex or desire. My desire for other women had always been really shamed. Or I remember even times we were talking, swapping stories about maybe going to sex parties or yeah. past partners maybe, you know. And I always remember that I was like, ah, I'm not feeling bad about telling this story. Mm. She's accepting that I'm telling this story about maybe some time I was in a foreign country and I ended up sleeping with some girl, but she would just listen and, re- and reply as if she's hearing a friend tell her a story or like laugh in a way. And I remember being like, I feel really, ah, I feel really accepted for who I am in that moment like in those moments and it was like oh that was really important to me yeah it was something that was so beautiful and because I had also had I came to a point where I was like how have I been feeling in what did not work in previous relationship Mm. I so and for me so for you was a lot about like being like being with uh, being with other women and you know loving sex and really exploring that and this was something that was very important to me as well and mm. the more that I had become the woman that, that I am and started my own journey of, of sexual liberation and for me what was the biggest thing for me was that I used to be shamed or I used to be kind of held back from my um, you know, brilliance as a as a businesswoman. Mm. It was always something that ex partners would be like, "She's fucking going for it. She's gonna be really good at this. She's gonna leave me." Mm. And I was like, "Hey, I'm you know, you know, I am doing my career because of me and my passion. It got nothing to do with with my career. And it would be really cool. Maybe we can do celebrate tonight because you know I did this thing and it we worked really well." And they were like, you know. So because I came from it from that point of view, what I had also realized was be like, this is what it feels like when you are not celebrated for the human that you are and Mm. your growth potential. So to then understand that what was important for you was to not be shamed for sex. So even though when you were like, oh, I went to a sex party with my ex-partner and I went on a date with with this other woman and oh, I found, you know, this other woman was attractive. It wasn't Mm. like my body was like, oh, I feel so much joy when you're sharing this story. But what I felt joy towards was that you were able to share it with me. And I thought, I'm going to deal with my, all, my my own uncomfortability here because the alternative is to shut you down. Mm. And other people have shut me down and I didn't like it. So therefore, I'm going to gift to you what I hope you're going to gift to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a trust. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, let's give this to each other and support each other through. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know... One of the things that was really groundbreaking to me is like, you know, when we were open and we said that we would tell each other. Yeah. When I told you, you didn't, um, I didn't feel like who I was in those moments was unwelcome in the relationship. And it's funny, it's only now when I think about it, that, that for me was like a real, oh shit, I'm accepted. I'm really accepted. Mm. Like, okay, this might be difficult at times, but I feel very accepted. And I think... There's also, I think there's a second layer of that, and I'm, this is me just speculating, is that in the times then when you were, you know, upset and, and stuff like that, I then had to teach myself to stay with your upset and uncomfortability yeah. and to communicate that. And I think that is an incredibly important part of the relationship is the communication that we created very early on. It's like, if I can tell you the, the thing I'm most scared to tell you, and that's really difficult and you're going to accept me and 
maybe in those moments, and again, I'm just speculating that one of your fears was like, if I ex- if I express my emotion, I'm going to be rejected. Yeah, because I've been taught, you know, explicitly or whatever the other word is, where it's more unconscious, um, learning that I should just have all my emotions neatly packed up and delivered. Mm. Ideally not, this is my own story, but, you know, that I should preferably not feel anything. Mm. And just like, okay, cool, let's do next. Because this is, in a performance point of view, you you should have your head together and move Mm. forward. Um, So, yeah, you know, for me to... Because um, I remember you know, what I, what I really saw very early, I think is the first time when, when you told me that you had slept with someone else, A, I was like, oh, that was really quick. <laughs> and secondly, I'm fucking exhausted because I'm literally in the first year of setting up a business. Mm. You know, my previous me would be like, ruled out my love life once again to get ahead in my career. But this time around, I was like, I trust that I'm going to be successful in business. I'm going to, you know, let my love life, you know, to to explore something. So I had this like old patterns of like, you know, A, I like that's um, unexpected for me. This is just inconvenient for me. Now I'm going to be upset. I just wanted to sit down and like be naked with you and um, eat fish and chips, you know, which was um, something we did do quite quickly, mm, mm. <laughs> which I love now. Uh, well, from the first moment. And to then see that, I remember I was standing crying in the hallway and you were just so calm outwardly. I'm sure a lot of things went out in went on inside, but I had a reaction. I allowed myself to have a reaction. I allowed myself very, very early on in a relationship to cry mm. um, and be seen, even though I think it was quite dark. I think none of us kind of put the lights on and I was very grateful for that because I just wanted to kind of like hide away. Yeah. Equally, I didn't hide my face or anything. And I explicitly remember that you stood a few meters away from me and just looking at me, but you were very, you didn't look at me with like those like puppy eyes. It's like, oh my God, did I hurt you? You just like looked at me heads on as a strong, independent, you know, capable human being who Mm. was just trying to understand what it was that I needed. And I was able to say, hey, I, you know, just, just leave, leave me be for a few moments. And you were like, okay, cool. So it was a lot of like communication and boundaries respected. Mm. And I think we did this like dance of what do you need? Let me do my very best to give it to you, even Mm. though I'm not sure how to, even though it makes me feel deeply uncomfortable. And when we, when you created that safe, safe space that I was allowed myself to step into, um, we could talk. And then we could, you know, together support each other through that experience of me being deeply upset and make it mean lots of different things. But Mm. it was about what I made it mean. I didn't ever go to the point where it's like, you know, being angry at you or being like, you're wrong. It's just like, okay, this is an agreement. I have a very strong reaction. Didn't know that it was going to be so strong. But equally, that was received, you know, and we could therefore calm the situation down I don't know exactly what what words to to use but we could do a lot of communication lots of talking and then you know we could and eat and enjoy the day and if Mm. I needed to talk about it the morning after then you make that time Mm. I think in there is um two things is like you know listening and listening to each other from a position of them being powerful right yeah and capable so important you know something we see a lot with couples is like we kind of treat the other person as they're a bit broken. There's something wrong with them and, and so forth. And when when we do that, we are always trying to fix. And I think that's the really interesting one as well. There, I'm going to speak into that. It's like, I didn't look at Ulsa in any way like she needs to be fixed in no. any given situation. It was like, okay, she's a powerful human being that can deal with this. And she will say what she wants and doesn't want. And that's an interesting one. Like trusting that you will say whatever you need and not say we don't need so if you say to me do you want me to hug you and you say no i didn't then think "Mm, i think i know better than her and then Mm. try and assert that upon you or if you told me that you did want to hug, i didn't think okay maybe she's only saying that to say that and i think that sets up a real trust in each other's word and it also causes both and you know just went both ways like you know there's times where i've had my upset and you know you've been there yeah is that it trains you to start to ask what you want and what you don't want. Because Mm. you stop having this thing of like, I'm going to do this thing and then they should do this thing. Do you know when that subtle manipulation happens in a lot of relationships? It's like, oh, 
I'm going to, when I sit on the sofa and I'm sad, you should come and do something. But it's like, well, in that moment, when I do ask you, you say you don't want anything. So yeah. I now need to have some extra layer of logic. <laughs> um, <laughs> read your for mind. The, for, read your mind. There's none of that. It's like, okay, if she says she wants to be on her own or she says she's fine. If you say to me, you're okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. I don't then go, come on, tell me, you know, I know there's something wrong. What is it? Is it this, this and this? I don't. I go, okay, cool. You're fine. Yeah. And I think another thing as well is like none of us, you know, we're only humans, I'm sure sometimes, you know, we do things, you know, differently, but most of the time the kind of standard in, in who we are and how we show up in this relationship is that we don't apologize for our, who we are. I don't go, if, if I have, if you have gone, I think it was one time because every month we um, have relationship learnings, mm. which is really beautiful where we talk about what's gone on in the month and um, what we, the moment we felt most loved, what we would love to do more of and the things we want to change. And it kind of goes into that. And I think a few months in, we had a um, catch up scheduled in and then I kind of overruled it with a coaching session with one of my clients. Mm. And you said, um, I can see that, you know, you have a coaching client now. This is how it makes me feel. Mm. And I, I didn't apologize for going like, I didn't go into all my fear about like, oh my God, I'm such a shit human being. You know, I'm sorry for being so successful. I didn't, it, it did not create the backstory that I had. Oh, it's because you have a problem with me being a business. You know, I'm just busy, you know, da, da, da. I heard you and I said, you know, this is, you know, I understand it doesn't mean that I don't prioritize you and the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward. I completely get it. I'm going to talk to you. And I, when we have our sacred time, this will be the sacred time. Mm -hmm. And equally when you, when we were open or like even in other circumstances as well. And, you know, you had slept with someone else and I was upset. There was pretty much all the reactions. And, and this, it was like when you went to Ibiza, because I was like, of course, you're going to sleep with someone. In <laughs> you know, I think you came home and you're like, I slept with someone. I was like, OK, cool. What's for dinner? But apart from that, I had a strong reaction. But you never came from it from like. I'm broken or you're broken or whatever expression to go, I'm such a shit boyfriend. Oh, I know I shouldn't have done it. You didn't like no. excuse yourself out of it. You owned what you did equally created space to hear and see what it was that, that I needed. And I think the intention, it might sound like it's a fine line between it and I guess it is, but it's like the intention. And again, it, it's, it's dealing with your your partner's higher self, if you like, or mm. deeper self or most powerful version of self. We don't have to excuse ourselves out of something that we did that was also within boundaries or yeah. even if it was outside boundaries, like with me choosing a business appointment over our time, mm. it was just like, okay, you know, I hear you. Um, this is what I thought. Mm. This is what it doesn't mean. I'm mm. not going to do that again. I understand this is important. Mm. Also like a learning in there, you know, for me. Not to slip back to always prioritize work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that in terms of when we say work, I think it's kind of tied to, you know, we both work quite a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but it's kind of tied to this also, this idea of um kind of growth, I think. It's like I see you growing your business and I don't see that as in competition with me. And I can see where some people would be like, oh, it's between me and the business. Oh, you're always spending time with that thing, but you don't spend time with me. Yeah. Um, I'm very much like like a champion. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you go do your thing. How about this thing? And and, and that support in growing as human beings, I think is something that, you know, is kind of key to a conscious relationship. It's like, I'm supporting you in being the best version of you, even yeah. if that means that, things happen that make me uncomfortable you know it's the kind of idea we said earlier is like mm. and i'm not saying multiple ideas here but that often people say they want a conscious relationship because they think that it's going to mean a nice easy ride like i'm going to be happy all the time i'm going to feel good all the time and blah 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 but what you probably heard us talk about a little bit here is that being in a conscious relationship, if I, you know, I still struggle with that term when I mean it about us, but do you know what I mean? Because it's, it, I feel it's very loaded and whatnot, but it's been said about us enough that I'll, I'll take that on for, for this episode. Um, is actually that you're committed to growing as an individual yeah. and as a couple and for that individual. And that commitment to growth will often, God, I almost feel like 
it almost supersedes the relationship to a certain degree sometimes. You're like, this is the... But because of the fact that you know that you growing doesn't isn't in diminishment to the relationship. Yeah, and it's to trust the connection, it's to trust the relationship rather than being, I think something we talked about before we started recording, is like being selectively supportive. Mm. You, you know, if we want, we I hear from my end that a lot of women want to have deep support and you hear from your end that men want to have deep support. You know, I want to be supported, you want to be supportive. Um, you know, to give the examples we've spoken about here, you know, I want to be supported as a as a businesswoman, and you wanted to be, um, you know, amongst other things, of course, but with your sexual exploration and you know understanding and exploring your own sexuality. So we have to do that even when things feel uncomfortable, because there's nothing in it for us. Just the pure trusting that mm. the partner will grow mm. and still come back to you, mm. and that's a big thing. It's like when you're gonna. I don't know how to explain Ista exactly. It's all right. But you're going to go to to Easter and to explore your sexual self and boundaries and, you know, communication is a lot of things. And my understanding is like it's a lot of nudity and it's a lot of, you know, talking about sex and, you know, understanding pleasure and like touch and things like that. My default would be like, this is fucking really uncomfortable. Mm. My, um, well, my... Um, opposite to conscious my unconscious side of my like you know un unhealthy or less developed or whatever you know you want to call it would just be like i'd rather you not do that because this makes me feel what do you mean you're gonna sit on for a week and just be with you know around other people in an in a naked environment mm. but that's my shit that i need to deal or like choose mm. to deal with it's a much better i don't need to do anything but i choose to do it because this is about you and your growth. Mm. And this has been something that I you communicated since day one. And one of the reasons why I fell in love with you. Mm. It's easier to enter a relationship feel far more disadvantaged. Because you now really love and want to be with this person. Of course you're going to feel more scared. Mm. You know, date two is like, yeah, cool man. You do whatever you want to do. Mm. <laughs> you know, a few years in when there is a whole different level. So it's still to go, okay, what would I love to do in this situation, even though it makes you feel uncomfortable and then being able to communicate, I understand you want to do X, Y, Z, mm. you know, these are my fears. What would really help me is if we sat down so I understand exactly what goes on and then we can talk about, you know, what boundaries looks like. Mm. I'm sure, you know, I think it was more early, early on in, in our relationship. And I think we had an event and it was someone like a successful businessman that was speaking to me. And I, remember a few days after you said, oh, I felt quite insecure as you were speaking to him because he's like a really powerful businessman that could just like fly you to, you know, south of France tomorrow mm. and I can't do that. And he was like, okay, but you still didn't go up to be like, don't talk to that man or what are you talking, what are you doing talking to other people? It's like, it's the only examples I kind of could come up with now, but it's to support your partner through what feels uncomfortable for you. And it's, if you're holding them back, you wouldn't want to be held back. You want to, mm. and if you're saying that you, you know, where are you making yourself feel or be smaller? What is that you really dream of? What gets you really fucking excited? What gets you really, really turned on? What do you really want to do? Get honest with yourself mm. about those things and then trust and learn the communication tools to talk about it in the relationship. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people is like, no, I'm totally cool. It's like, well, you don't have any other hopes and dreams and missions and visions for your life. Mm. You know, are you, is that true? Or are you lying to yourself? Because if you have visions and ask your partner to support you, I'm sure they are going to have dreams and visions. So it means mm. you're not going to have to support them and yeah. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to pretend like I don't want more. Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like... It's like, I'm not going to tell you what I would really love because it might mean that you might grow away from me in some way. Yeah, it's all, you know, it's even from like previous relationships where I, um, you know, I think it's become clear that I, I love a goal. And um, so a few years ago, I wanted to have a goal with my gym and I decided mm. to um, compete in a bikini fitness competition. And I was working so hard with like measuring like to the gram or the rice and turkey and, you know, you mm. eat so much exercising, doing, drinking all the fluids, doing everything. And all my partner could say, he was like, 
but when you're on stage, other men are just going to look at you and they're just going to want to fuck you. Yeah. And I was like, really? You know, you see all... I'm not on that to get some yeah. attention. That's all you can think about. That's just think about himself. Yeah, you do thought face. about, you know, and I understand you have fears, so you can talk to me about it, but there was nearly... I don't know, I can't... Did he come and actually watch it? I think through me going like... I want you to come. I want you to really be there. And if you're not, this is going to be really problematic. Like almost, you know, it's gonna be threatening. Problem. It's going to be a problem, mate. <laughs> you come and watch. You know, and for me, I showed... I thought that, you know, I'm a, I'm a quality woman. Mm. Look at all the dedication and, you know... Mm that I put towards this process and, you know, I'm really going for it. I'm really committed. Surely this is really good traits. Yeah. But that wasn't seen because yeah. it was the fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I think, is one of the things is like inherent of any relationship is your fears will come up. Mm. You know, and I think... All of the time. Yeah. And it's not <laughs> because you're in a, you know, I'm doing air quotes here, quote unquote, conscious relationship that no one has any fear anymore. We just feel completely comfortable. It's actually that you just are you have formed a bond in which you can talk about them and almost talk about them as a, a separate thing sometimes. Like we literally would be like, oh, my fears are saying blah, 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 blah. And it's like, not that we disown them, but it's like, they are my fears speaking from that place. And I literally hear you and I'm like, she's talking about her fear and this doesn't automatically make this thing true that she's thinking and living out of because it's like, you know, we're thinking of the the... The, the high self and also the the growth and supporting that it's like you know you've always been in your doing your business i'm like yeah fucking rock on yeah you know it's not as i said before it's not really a threat to my um existence as a as, as your partner i think it's just seeing that for people is like how they create um almost like create problems in the relationship by acting as if your partner doing something that's going to take away from you like in their job or they're spending time with their friends or yeah. you know say like wanting space for instance you know that's a mm. kind of thing for me you know as a masculine being i have a thing about you know space and freedom right and it's just like also has supported me in that because that's what's important to me and it's like yeah. she doesn't believe that me going off for a few days on my own and staying somewhere takes away from our relationship and i think that's you know and it wasn't always you know it's not always easy to do that no and it wasn't always in that way you know in our like my mom and dad they never took a holiday separately you know they never did really you know i didn't see them do a lot of things separately they were always together mm. and my only example my only evidence which the brain loves the only evidence that i had of anyone taking space i.e you know a time for oneself I looked at that as like that means that something is wrong mm. and it means that this relationship is soon having like an ex expiration date and it oh. cannot draw the line in the sand when so it was again it's like you wanted and needed I think it was when we listened to John Wineland one of his podcasts was it him that said that women generally you know we we're speaking in general terms everyone is an individual and a human and all that but generally like women can never have enough love and men can never have enough freedom i think he says the masculine can never have enough freedom and the okay. feminine can never have enough love all right uh, so that was my hearing at the time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago before i started understanding this deeper um and when i heard that i was like yeah that's so true for me. Yeah. Now when I've unleashed my feminine, you know, and my expression and, you know, my channel of love, mm. it can I can never have enough. Yeah. Like if, if I could, you know, like I you would carry you in like my back pocket every day all day long. Mm. I also recognize that that's not healthy. Yeah. And I think I also recognize it's not really what I want, but it's mm. like it's ro a romanticization awesome. of, of something. Yeah. But when I heard that that resonated deeply for me, once again, I was like, if this resonates deeply for me surely this resonates deeply for david yeah so if we can create if i can create accept that i want more love mm. and can communicate this and then i'm gonna let david do the same and if i feel good in this and he feels good in that then surely this will work better and it was like to trust it even though i mm. didn't know it at the time because all my evidence had been the opposite yeah but it was to take small small steps you know, hearing you out, you hearing me out, talking about, okay, these are my fears, 
equally this is what I make it mean mm. you know I need some help here or this is what I'm hearing as you're talking about it and just trusting that you could you know go away for a few days and then I saw my own you know evidence in that that you came back with more love for mm. me and more love for the relationship and I was like bloody hell this thing really works <laughs> 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 go away no I'm joking <laughs> no I always want you to, to be close but you know um I recognize that this is important to, to you and equally mm. like in the relationship where you know I can't ever feel like there is enough love you also you know create it's like I can ask I think it was one moment we were lying in bed and I said um, oh it would be really nice if you could hold me mm. and you were like yeah of course I do this and you said oh this would be so big news to to some people to just like I need a cuddle I need yeah. you to hold me and it's like oh, okay I didn't know that because I can't read your mind and then mm. give it to your partner so it is that you know that was pretty like a long-winded answer but it's just the importance of understanding what you need what your partner needs and if you choose to for the greater good of you and for the greater good of the relationship for the greater good of your partner to create having this in your relationship sometimes it's going to feel really easy you literally want to throw a party because it feels so good mm. other times you just want to like shut down and just lie in bed and just everything feels awful and both are okay mm. it doesn't mean that if you feel uncomfortable that you should not do it i think a lot of people is like oh this feels uncomfortable for me this means that's wrong yeah not necessarily we just need to understand our emotions and feelings and our yeses and our noes how we sit in the body and mm. you know this this takes work and you can do it and is from getting deeply curious about you know relationship with the self yeah yeah and i think there's also you start to kind of feel into your partner after a while if you're paying attention yeah you know if you pay attention it's like okay mm, what, what's what am i feeling there is in this moment like that she needs or she wants um and then you can only really do that when you get out of your own kind of not selfish desires but like oh, i want this i want that because in when you're there you can't really look past that right you're just thinking about what you want but if i'm like mm, what does also what do i feel like also needs right now and that's another way of even though it's not explicitly things they're asked for, it's still sometimes even things one doesn't realize that one really wants. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of what we teach, I suppose, is to um, slow down, mm. become deeply present, to come into your body, to come into your heart space, because otherwise you miss these little cues. Mm. And if you miss these little cues over a long period of time, it gets fucking explosive and yeah. your partner is going to lose it or you're going to lose it, mm. which again, you know, have deep compassion when that happens. It's, it's, it's normal. It happens. And the way to... Mess, make it less dramatic and, and more as a, what, what you do in the relationship is to tune in to your partner and really hear them and really see them and really feel them you know and that's actually I made a little note um, earlier this is something that on our first date mm. I when we did lots of talking and lots of like checking whether the space was like becoming smaller between us whether mm. we were like moving closer to one another uh, when it eventually did after hours and hours of just like checking out where we were in relation to each other's space um I remember and this was like as an outward experience where I looked at you in your eyes mm -hmm. and I said I wanted to take really I wanted I want to take it really slow yeah and you were like okay and if someone asked me, what did you mean by that? I literally wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. It was like an out of body experience where I had learned that in the past I rushed into relationships mm -hmm. very, very quickly. And to your point earlier on that you, when we were dating, you were like, oh, let, let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, very early I was like, this man is incredible. I just want to be with him all the time <laughs> and if this would have been me years earlier I would have been like I need to make him mine and kind of like what do I need to do to kind of <laughs> lock him down mm. and make him mine mm. you know but this would come from a fear state of that you somehow were gonna run away mm. so how I had then trained my myself I suppose was that I had this tip of it's okay when you meet someone to feel really fucking excited mm. 
to just feel like I can't wait to like watch a sunset or a sunrise on some beach somewhere with this person and you know be with them for a long 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 time Mm -hmm. the trick and what I learned was to go like accept and acknowledge that and then go what is the next thing that I'm excited about yeah so if this was again if this was us meeting years you know prior Mm. I would have felt all these feelings probably been very very scared to have felt all these feelings I would have just shut down and be like we're gonna be a fuck buddy relationship um or I would have gone like okay let's move in let's do all this thing let's just like do all the thing that means that he is now in a relationship with me this is lock this down and none of them had worked out for me before so I was like okay what's the what else could I try and that was the the slowing down and just Mm. like being very much in the moment yeah whilst being really really you know excited um for the future Mm, mm. as well yeah and I think what's important I really heard there is like you know you stayed in the excitement and the joy yeah and it's also interesting that my experience is different but doesn't mean that I care any less deeply for also and I think this is a really interesting thing to say because often like I'm able to be just because of some of the relationship experiences I had leading up to us, be very much like, oh, this is going to, and I can just let this unfold. I'm excited about this each time I'm in it. Mm. And I'm just looking like unfolding a little bit, a little bit further on where I am now. Yeah. And enjoy that as well. And that was, you know, I remember when you said to me that day, you were like, oh, and it was funny because I, when you said, oh, you know, can we go slow? Mm. I remember being like, oh, that's odd. Like, everything I've been saying to her would point to that is just how I am. Yeah. And I remember, and I remember even I thought that I just went, of course, I think that was my response. I said, of course. Um, and, you know, to hear that as well was quite magical because it's like, you don't hear people really like say it and embody it. And, you know, it enabled us to really be in that, in that evening. And, you know, for a long times after that, to be honest, you know, yeah. it's always been, you know, we just were in what we were in. And like, even now we're really present to our relationship and like, you know, what we want to create and any goals we have as well. Like, you know, we have yeah. joint goals and things we want, um, that we talk about that we want, like vision balls, stuff like that. So it's like being confident in saying that. Like, and I guess maybe to a certain degree, I feel like maybe I led some of those activities. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I was and it's very, funny. very scared. Yeah. And it's funny because, <laughs> you know, this, this might sound kind of opposite. It's like, I didn't really lead relationships particularly before. Mm. Um, but this is an area that I'm like, I know she would really love to do this, but she doesn't know that we could do this. Like the relationship review, I was like, we could do this. This would be really good. When I kind of thought, realized that talking, there was, I don't know, there was a moment where like maybe some resentment had built up somewhere mm. and was said, I remember being like, if we could talk about these little things constantly, the life would be really, really good. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's like important to even say that now we're going to be moving to Portugal for, for some months. And it's like to be like, I want to create this. Yeah. Like, and I think that's where a lot of men don't get into um, creating the relationship. It's because they're not creating the relationship. They get mm. bored because they're doing the same thing they've always been doing, but they're not trying to create something new. Like, like I'm like, okay, how can we make this, experience of being together more amazing yeah right what do i want to do and what do i think that she would also like to do that she may not know that she wants to do yeah you know or and i think that's where I say going to portugal for instance i was like yeah we can do this and i remember you would be like oh you know thinking some other things and i was like no 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 this is a be amazing this would be a great thing to do yeah and i think this is where your relationship doesn't get boring because you're continually pushing forward to grow the relationship and the experiences that you have together in that and that's like I'm not conscious, it's weird, I'm not consciously thinking, oh, how are we going to grow as individuals even better? But I'm like, what the, what would be amazing to experience? Yeah. I want to experience some shit, you know, you do too. Mm. And it's just like completely creating that as that goes. Yeah, and what's interesting to, you know, behind, so before we even met, 
And I think this is, you know, before we even met, I had, you know, and you as well, like both of us had started to become clear about what we wanted from a relationship, what mm. we want from life, who we are, how we want to show up, you know, what we want to be celebrated for, where we want to have the support. And interestingly, so, you know, without knowing that we existed in you know on this planet mm. we had started the you know a similar journey into understanding this and also one of them was that i had you know now when we are moving to portugal which i'm so so excited about about like four or five years ago when i first met my now business coach and she was running this successful coaching business from abroad and she mm. was traveling with her husband and the three kids i was like that would be really really cool to do one day mm. and you know now four years on, you know, in this journey, I then met you and it turns out that you would love to to experience something similar. And it's not to say that even though it's something that I wanted, as David, you said, like you have led it more than I because I have been very scared, even though I very much lean into it. And this is why I always say that this is where the magic happens because mm. you create your life. Mm. It's like when I even said uh, last year, oh, um, how would you feel about celebrating a New Year's with me in Sweden? Mm. I felt nervous mm. saying that, but it's like taking steps forward to create what you want your relationship to look like. And if you're waiting for everything to feel 100% confident, you know, chances are you lose out on many, 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 many years if ever mm. you reach that point. And that is what I find. I don't want people to have that experience because it's like, we live once, you can create fucking amazing things. Mm. There are people who want the same things as you, yeah. you know, <laughs> and in the relationship, they maybe want to do exactly what it is that you want to do, but someone needs to take the step forward to, to lead with that and actually speak it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's how you, you know, when you create that in yourself and also, you know, have that clear for you, like you can start to, you know, show up in that way as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we both often speak about like it all starts with you. And this is, uh, you know, another thing with, with conscious relationship. I, I see a lot of people wanting to be in a, in a conscious relationship. And then we also explore how what their relationship is like with their own wants and needs, desires and emotion. And when you're my experience of being in a, you know, feels like other people are giving us this label of, of conscious relationship. So we're kind of running with it for the purpose to understand what we're talking about is that in a so-called conscious relationship, when both individuals or more are deeply aware, they understand their triggers, they understand their motivators, they understand what's a story versus what's a fact. You need to do the same because mm. they want, they can meet you because they want to support you, but they're not going to deal with your own shit. They're not going to save you. No, you need to do that yourself. Mm. And equally, you need to want, you need to go deeper and open your heart wider in order to receive deeper love, which is like the most incredible, healing, powerful I've ever experience with you. Yeah. Um, and it's also been the most scary of journeys mm. because it meant that I, this is who I am. This is literally all of me. This is my biggest dreams and my, you know, uh, deepest fears. And this is me on a good day. This is me on a shit day. You know, hey, I cry a lot. Um, mm. This is it. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I hope you're cool with it because this is who I am. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a lot of things. And the the in order to have the space to be who you are, can only happen if you step into the place of being that person in the first place. Mm, yeah. Because otherwise you're limiting your own experience, even though there is space there for you to step into. Yeah. And then if your own partnership is allowing your partner to be the person that you see they can be as well. Yeah. And trust. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Trust is a big thing. Trusting yourself, trusting your partner, and just trusting what's yeah. here. Trust the connection. Trust the connection, you yeah. know, and what's and I think this is something that you spoke about, um, where you where you supported me in in the journey of, of me trusting men again mm. to you know, situation or phrase or whatever happened. Um 
my mind went into to fear and my old experiences as it would be the sole truth like that would always going to happen again I knew at that time that was not true Mm -hmm. and you told me to check in with myself to go okay this is what happened this is my feelings and thoughts about it are they true like Mm -hmm. is it true and it was to go you know no and David is different and I have learned a hell of a lot I have strong boundaries I have checked in with my body whether this is a yes no maybe and if it's a if it's not a yes or if it's not a strong no then I take my time to wait until I understand and and, you know so there's a lot of support systems in place and this that like you know, leap of faith. Can I, can I trust, do I choose to, to trust the here and now? Mm. Yes, I do. Okay, cool. Then we can soothe our nervous system and the, and the triggers that occurs because mm. your brain kind of have these thoughts, which creates a feeling <laughs> which can just completely deceive you. Yeah. 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 And you know, and there's also on the other side, it's like holding space for that in both directions, Yeah, you know, and I think that's the, when it happens, is to not be, not to be personal about it, not to be like, oh, it's all about me, it's all about me, is actually to be like, ah, oh, you know, there's something, what are they communicating, you know, what's there, I can hold this space. And I think that's a, you know, it's not easy and you're not going to do 100% of the time. You yeah. Know? Yeah, either way. <sighs> so I think we're realising we should finish up because the time is going, it's getting a long, too long episode, but... um you know, it's been really beautiful to record this, actually. It's been very powerful, actually, yeah. to record this episode like this. Um, you know, listeners, if you want to hear more episodes like this, then you have to let us know, and we can do this again. Um, yeah, even on, like, a particular topic or something, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe just a side episode, or create a new podcast. I don't know. If people, you really want it, then talk. Uh, let us know. Because um, I think it's been really beautiful to record this. Oh, it's to, been so beautiful. To, to say these things out. And I hope... It's been useful to you. Um, I hope you've learned something for what, you know, how you can show up in just trying to get into a relationship or, you know, nurture and change the relationship you're in already. Yeah. Um, and if you are a couple or, or solo humans and you resonate with what we're saying and you want some coaching or some help from either of us, you know, I generally deal with men and also generally deals with women. Um, you know, you can find me, you know where to find me at, at The Authentic Man underscore on instagram and www.theauthenticman.net um and you can find also where can we find you um so i am very active on on social media so Mm. you can either so my coaching side of the business is coach with wasa and that's coach with a s a Uh, sounds um, sounds very different to what it looks like and if you want to check out the matchmaking and educational side this is tailor matched so it's tailor as in tailoring tailor matched perfect yeah perfect and you know we're going to do a workshop about conscious relating um and you know the learnings that we've taken on and maybe some exercise and stuff to help you with communication and you know talking about sex and things like that so you're going to find that in the show notes you know the date and so forth um where you can get involved in that and if you enjoyed this episode then you'll you'll love the workshop basically because you know it'll just be more of that yeah absolutely no i'm very and thank you so much for for having me it's mm-hmm. been so beautiful and i know we you know it's a lot of we're working a lot and it's been really beautiful to um talk about us to talk about us and mm-hmm. to re uh, live some you know early memories and, mm. and how we are and you know everything that i love about you so mm, mm. Ah. no no it's really beautiful <laughs> yeah all right people <laughs> hope you had a great day and um yeah let us know what you think ciao ciao bye